Hello guys and welcome to Downstrams. I'm Tom and this is a Tram of the Week. Alright guys, welcome once again. Thanks for watching. Today we're taking a look at the Longmorn Distiller's Choice. Uh, this one is 40% ABV, so it's not really that high of a proof, um, but it is from a very famed uh, whiskey distillery, Longmorn. Uh, it's not that well known uh, with, say, the broader public, um, which is really a shame because what they do, what they make is so incredible. They make such incredible whiskey that they really should be more well known. And they have ramped up their production in recent years, so hopefully we should see more releases coming out of Longmorn and also at a little bit lower prices because their whiskeys are pretty expensive. Uh, right now they have also a Longmorn 16 year old, um, which is very, very famed in the whiskey community. People really, really love that one. I would love to try it. Um, if anyone has a sample of that, I would love to. Uh, but this time, the only sample that I have here is the Longmorn Distiller's Choice. The Distiller's Choice is obviously a non aid statement uh, whiskey from Longmorn. Um, I think it contains a couple of younger whiskeys and a couple of older whiskeys as well. Uh, it has been matured in sherry casks and also uh, ex bourbon casks. What's actually also interesting about the Longmorn Distillery is that. Um, one of the founding fathers of the Japanese whiskey, uh, Masataka Takatsuru, actually went to Longmorn to look how things were done in Scotland, how they made whiskey in Scotland. And actually, the stills at the Nika distillery that he later founded are actually based off the stills at Longmorn. So that's a little bit of an interesting fact right there that, uh, you know, I'm giving away to you for free. Um... So this particular whiskey is very, very, very nice. <laughs> uh, it is non age statement. And for me, usually, if you've seen a couple of my videos, 15, 18 years old is usually my sweet spot for whiskey. This one doesn't have an age statement. I'm guessing the average age of the whiskey in here is about 8 to 10 years old, but I can't really verify that. But there's definitely some older whiskeys in, in there as well. So when you first smell this, it is just so fruity. It is intensely fruity. It's like a yeah, it's like a, a fruit basket full of different kinds of fruits. The first thing that really hit me when I first smelled this one, the very first time, was ginger. You know, ginger really popped out at me. And then overall, there's this overwhelming fruitiness. Apples, oranges. You know the typical Speyside fruits, but they are much. They are very intense here. It doesn't really smell like sherry either, like a lot of heavily sherried Speyside whiskeys. You know, you really get all those distinct sherry notes, but in this case, it's a little bit different. You know, it's a little bit fresher than that. But then again, there's also a creaminess to it. You know, there's also a um, creme brulee touch that, that happens there. Let's give it a taste. Damn. This one is a journey. Yeah. In the beginning that you have this in your mouth, it's super smooth. 
but it changes constantly. In the beginning, it's super smooth. It's super sweet, fruity. You get those fruity notes. You get vanillas. You get caramel. It's very oily. It has a wonderful mouthfeel. But then after a while, when you have it in your mouth for longer, I would recommend having this in your mouth a little bit longer than usual, it transitions into this wonderful spiciness, this ginger kick, the actual ginger spiciness actually hits you. And also there's a, a black pepper note to it that just spikes up. And then once you swallow it, it goes right back down. And, you know, it comes back again on the finish, but it kind of transitions between being there and not being there. It's it's kind of like a wave of spice, you know? It's so interesting because there's a constant sweetness and then that spiciness kicks in with a spike once you have it in your mouth. It's not unpleasant at all. It's a wonderful spiciness. Um, there's no bitterness to it at all. But at the far end of the finish right now, it starts transitioning into a nice coffee, but not like a espresso you know not like a black coffee more like a latte but a little bit little bit of that coffee edge to it um so there's definitely some coffee notes in here oh, but man this is a wonderful wonderful malt for a non-age statement whiskey this is very good this is actually one of my favorite space side whiskeys i have ever tried um and that really is saying something I have tried a couple. You can check out the spreadsheet uh, below if you want to see all the ones that I have tried. So I have those to compare to it. But this one is very nice. Let's get, let's have another sip here. Oh yeah. This one is really worth spreading around your entire palate. You know, spread it, spread it across your tongue. The sides, the front. Just, it engulfs everything with that nice spiciness, the nice sweetness. It is perfectly balanced. This one is really nice. It's a really, really great whiskey. And that's why I thought it was worth making a little review about it and making it the try of the week because this is just one fine whiskey there we go long more distiller stories i would love to try the 16 uh i heard really good things about it um i think the 16 in terms of flavor profile seems to be pretty similar as far as i what i can hear uh, on the internet from other reviewers um the flavor profile seems pretty similar to this one um but the 16 is supposedly a little bit more oily. This one does have a little bit of an, a young edge. Um, I wouldn't say the youngness really jumps out at you. Like I've had another uh, whiskey this week, was, which was the Glengarry uh, a six-year-old release. And that one really was metallic and, and pungent and really strange. Um, this one doesn't have that at all. So this one, you wouldn't really tell this is a very young whiskey. Except if you are an experienced whiskey taster, you start to... You know, recognize certain very subtle things like slightly metallic notes on the far edge of the finish, things like that. Um, this one doesn't really have that, but there is a slight hint, you know, some slight hints that give away this has some younger whiskeys in it, but there's definitely mature whiskey in there as well. It's perfectly blended, in my opinion. Uh, a very nice whiskey. It's not cheap for non age statement whiskey, but for one of the best space sides I have tried. I think it's probably worth it to pick up a bottle of this one if I can find it, because that is kind of the problem with Longmorn. It's pretty hard to find, uh, but then again, it is worth it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.